Hey guys, Traveling Philosophers here. Hey! So I'm going to quickly demonstrate a ancient, it's a South African style of repelling that I just learned. So first, you need to find a good solid anchor point. Okay? Oh, and this method of repelling is very unique in the fact that all you need is a rope and your body. It's good for emergencies. I wouldn't recommend it as like a primary method of repelling because it doesn't utilize the harness um, and it does cause a little bit of rope burn usually. So it's not like the safest, but if a rope is all you got, it's, you know, you're going to do what you do. So you're going to take your anchor point and you're going to take your rope and you're going to double it up. This is so afterwards you can retrieve your rope and you're going to tie figure eight knot. You can find out how to do via Google. Maybe I'll make another video. You tie the figure eight knot, and then you have to splay out your whole rope again. Now you do that because you want your figure eight knot to be at the bottom of the cliff or incline. But afterwards, you can untie it and then retrieve your rope from the bottom and you don't lose your rope after it's been And because it's at the bottom, you don't really need to tie a safety because it's, there's really no stress to put on to the knot. So when you throw it down, you want to make sure it doesn't get snagged on any obstructions. This is a very small incline. This is really all I have to demonstrate. Um, but if you had a larger cliff, you want to try to look over the edge to make sure you're not going to get hung up on any sticking out rocks or branches. Good. And I brought a glove because this technique isn't completely painless and it does cause a little bit, it will cause a little bit of rope burn most likely. And then I just wrap it around my arm like this. Make sure you have a really firm grip on it. You are going to let the rope out like that. So. Um, and again, I'd wear thicker clothing. Um, one rookie mistake is people will lean into it because they're afraid and they don't want to fall. You know, it's a natural response to lean into it, but then that makes you more likely to sip, slip out of the makeshift harness. You have to trust it and lean back like this. And as you bring your arm out behind you and the rope out more. Like so. And again I'm hunching over. This is actually the first time I've attempted this method. And with the long sleeves it's not that painful. If you had short sleeves on, I could see what would be a whole story. And then at the bottom, make sure your footing's safe and then you can untie. You don't have modern equipment, so you're not going to be able to bound down and jump like in the movies. But the rope is all you have. You will be able to get down a very steep incline, you know. Another method, it's a German method, I apologize but can't think of how you pronounce the name off the top of my head, but I'll spell it for you in the video. Um, that method, some people find it has a little bit less friction on the body, because you can see even with the long sleeve shirt, I got a little bit of rope burn. It looks bad, but it doesn't like hurt when you're doing it, it'll hurt after. 
there's nothing that'll like stop you from being able to do the technique. But anyway, the German method has a little bit less rope burn, but you're not as contained in a makeshift harness. So it's not really safe for like vertical faces like that. You're much more likely to fall out of the harness. And especially if you're inexperienced, it's, it's safer to get a little bit of rope burn and have that harness that goes around your torso and your legs. That way you're much apt to slip out of it and die because I'd rather have rope burn than fall off of a much larger cliff face. So to get your rope back, just come down and you untie the knot and then you pick an end and you pull it and hopefully you're going to get snagged on anything. That's part of the reason you look for stuff um, before you throw it down. And you could have the knot at the top and you could pull it down, but the knot's just a little bit more likely to get snagged in between two rocks or a branch crook than the, um, than the rope itself. Then you continue your day. Also, I neglected to mention, first of all, don't try this at home. Second of all, if you're gonna try it at home, make sure you use a climbing rope, not a rope from a hardware store. Um, because if you fall and you jerk it, just because like the ropes were rated to hold 300 or 500 or 600 or 700 pounds and you weigh like 200 pounds, when you fall, there's way more force on it and there's a jerk. Um, and that jerk changes your force by a lot. Like when I jump, I, even though I weigh like 175, 180 pounds, when I jump like that, um, you know, the force impacting my legs is like three or 400 pounds. So if you fall, like three or four feet and jerk the rope, it's way more force. And the safety ratings for ropes from hardware stores are not the same. So you want to go with good climbing rope because it's tested to hold human life because your life is literally on the line. Also, you know, trees, rocks, they're abrasive. Um, climbing rope, it's a little bit more designed to handle that kind of thing. You want to always inspect your rope before use too. The reason this method is more for an emergency type situation where you don't have proper climbing gear. Pulling your rope up and down and attaching it to the tree puts a lot of wear and tear on the rope. So it's not good for your rope. And it's also why you want to use a climbing rope. Because if you bought a rope from the hardware store, it might be good to do this like five times and then six times you could fall, you know. Um, and also if you're gonna try this at home when you're first practicing, don't use an incline like this. You wanna use like, like just a hill. That way, if you slip, the worst thing that happens is you trip and you land on your butt. Um, you'll have much more confidence. You'll be able to lean back into the harness better. You'll really be able to perfect the technique and make sure you're doing it right before you try it on a steeper incline. So, I realized before you guys couldn't really see the technique well, so now I'm wearing white. I got my black robe. I'm going to show it to you. So, you want to cross it behind your back. Then you're going to step on the outside of both, both pieces. And then you're going to bring it in between your legs like that. Being careful of the groin area. This makes a makeshift harness and you're going to bring it out to one side and then you can wrap it around your hand and um, let the rope out as you go down. Like I said, so this creates a harness around your lower back or upper back. If the anchor points higher up, Gonna have a makeshift anchor point right now for them in the house. If your anchor point is higher up, it's gonna be higher on your back and it goes around your legs and your back. So even if I twist or I get really messed up, I'm not gonna completely come out of the harness. I might hurt myself, but I'm not gonna fall. So again, step in between, cross it, step on the outside, both feet the legs, careful of the groin area, block it, hand out behind you to split it out, good to go. I know the cliff that I demonstrated on was pretty small, but I'm going to have another video There's like this 50 foot cliff that I'm going to demonstrate the technique on to show you guys that it's the real deal and you can do it in a uh, more dangerous situation. Our YouTube channel is Traveling Philosophers. And we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff like this, how-tos, gear reviews, but it's, it's primarily a travel channel. We're going to show the places we're going. We're going on this big trip through South America. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so if you guys subscribe, if you like what you see, if you want to learn more techniques like this, if you want to see our travels, I'll link our cool, uh, we got an underwater swimming video. We swam over these little waterfalls 
link that up there. Yeah, 